pronounce myself wife and many bookish men on my top five best male characters list featuring all the other five worst male characters of 2019 who can go crawl in a hole and sit in it and think about what they did. We're gonna count them, you and I, the five best and the five worst. This is essentially half a my bookish boyfriend's video. So if you got a bookish boyfriend, comment below, but it better not be one of mine. I will fight. I will fight. Here we go. Okay. The fifth best male character I read in 2019 is my sweet baby August from This Savage Song. He is a puppy and he needs someone to hold him and protect him even though he is a soul-eating demon who can just yank my soul out of my ribcage. August lives in a city divided in half by a reign of monsters. He is a monster too called a Sunai, the more human type of monster. They look human, they act human, however they are born from tragedies. August in particular came from like a school shooting so he inhabits like all the lost and confused emotions those kids were feeling so he's walking through life just lost and confused. He doesn't know where he fits in the anything and he is sweet. He's not gonna hurt anyone unless he has to eat but he's a brave brave soul and he wants to make his adopted family the Flynn's the rulers of the half of the city named Verity that is the more normal half. They're fighting against the other half that's ruled by oh I can't even remember let's call him Daryl. Daryl and his army of Malachi, the vampire nasty monsters. But anyways, August is just walking in life trying to figure out what's happening. Why am I here? And eventually he gets a friend named Kate who helps him realize some stuff. They go on an epic adventure, save each other's lives a few times, and they form some of the best friendships I've ever read about. His overall sweetness won my heart. And even though he can kill everyone, he doesn't want to. However, the fifth worst character is August from the sequel, Our Dark Duet. Everything that made him pure and wholesome in the first book was yanked out of him. So now he's just moody, and not like the good type of moody like his brother Leo. No. He's just the... That's it. That's it. And he and his friend Kate were separated. He had no one to emotionally bounce off of. Soro does not count. Oh, Soro. You lucky, Soro. You're lucky. Or Soro. I don't know how the name's pronounced. I don't care. It was a lackluster sequel because you took the spark out of August. And that's why he's the fifth worst. Because he was the fifth best. And I'm not ready to let go. Onwards to our fourth worst character. Wait, no. Onward to our fourth best character. It is a tie between the inevitable enemies pitted against each other, each seeking revenge for their own reasons, Victor and Eli, the worst of the villains in the good way, but the most in-depth characters that are just out for blood. They make one of the best rivalries ever. I think I like Eli more than Victor because Victor killed someone who really didn't deserve to die. So that's why this is called the villain duology. Vicious and vengeful. They're both so good. Victor has the superpower of being able to inflict pain. Eli is always regenerating so he never ages. You can't kill him so they're chasing after each other. One of them a self-righteous man. The other just a I'm gonna kill you slowly type of guy. But what pitted these awesome characters against each other? Read the book. You won't regret it. Also my favorite part about this series is that one of the fights between someone and someone else was a hug off. It was literally a hug off. And by the same author, the fourth worst character is Rise. Riss, Kel's brother from A Darker Shade of Magic. He's an idiot, okay? He put Kel, the better of the dudes, in so much danger cause he's stupid. <sighs> oh, first book. Oh, magic ring, I'll put it on. Uh-oh, bad things happen. Oh, second book. My brother ran away, but we have some sort of bond that lets him feel my pain. I'll just write his name on my arm in blood and bring him back. Oh, but now, because I inflicted pain on him, he's wounded, and then he gets kidnapped. Oh, dang. Oh, third book. There's a gigantic evil entity coming towards my kingdom. I, with no superpowers or magic to my name, and only a sword against an immortal deity, will march straight into his castle and tell him to stop. Then I get impaled by icicles. He was an idiot. And I think him mixed in with another character 
Alucard. Alucard was awesome, but once Rai got too close to Alucard, Alucard's growth went down because Rai was just all over him. You know, it's all, oh, lovey dovey, lovey dovey. And I'm like, he, he was a pirate. Let him do his pirate things. He was cool. Stupid Rai's. Rai bread. Ha. <laughs> And by the same author, we get to our third best male character. And now the third, second, and first male character all start with the letter K. Maybe I'm partial to the letter K because I am Casey. But it's Rai's brother, Kel. Kel, he was a fussy sort of man. Never smiled. A little bit, you know, what's it called? Tight-laced. You have this all-powerful magician. However, he has no memory of his former life before being brought into the palace of his king and queen. On his arm is a memory brand. If he removes the brand, maybe he'll be able to get his memories back of who he was, what his real name is. Because all he is, all he's feeling at this moment is a trinket to the king and queen. Like, oh look, we have the most powerful magician in our family. He's not a real family member. He is, as I said, an accessory. But this man, this magician, he's powerful, like I said. He can travel around everywhere. To all the alternative Londons, he goes on adventures. He's a funny-faced guy. <laughs> he's a straight-faced guy, making those sarcastic quips. He's protective. He also has to put up with his opposite, Lila, who is a notorious thief, and if he lets her out of his sight, for one minute, she'll go rob someone. He's a simple, magical man who has to deal with all this magical stuff. Special like an immortal dark magic deity who was awesome. A tragic man who eventually learns how to open up and see where his real worth is. Kel, you have my heart at number three. The third worst character in 2019, Wyland from Six of Crows. Why was this man here? Oh, he built one diamond power drill. Succeeding at one thing doesn't make you necessary to the story. It should have been Five of Crows, but that's not as catchy. He's really only here because Leigh Bardugo cannot have have a character stay single. Jesper should have been the funny single guy. He really should have. And Kaz, Kaz, you're my smart bro. You're using Wiley as a hostage for your little heist operation in Six of Crows. So he's valuable somehow. Wyland has value. Why are you taking him into enemy territory on a heist? The guy is not athletic. He has no burglary skills. He's slowing everyone down. Why is Wyland here? He didn't even have like a chapter perspective in Six of Crows. Everyone else did. Jesper, Nina, Matthias, Inej, Kaz. Not him. Not him. Because I know why. He's nothing. He's just the puppy that follows all the wolves. Second best character of 2019. It's my fellow redhead Kavoth. Yes, I am a redhead. I have some blonde highlights, but underneath, this is red. But this ain't about me. It's Kavoth. The musical playing, fast-talking, just a really smart guy at the university, Kavoth. Legend in the making. Legend in hiding. Legend whose author needs to finish that third book. He is just so much fun to follow around. His book is a fantasy contemporary, in my opinion, but it's made so interesting, even though we're not going on the typical fantasy trope quests and journeys. It's still interesting because Kavoth is interesting. And he's curious and he's learning stuff about this magic system. With any other character, this book series would crumble. But not with Kavoth, because he's just awesome. He's smart. He can quip anything. And this is starting to sound like a dating show. Candidate A loves long walks by the beach. And candidate number two for worst character of 2019, Leonard Peacock. At this point, I'm just done talking about you. You suck. But now, we get to the king, the best king of the crows. Sing it up. Oh my gosh, she is so cute. It's Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows. This man is a dark, sulky shadow of broody mafia amazement. He's just walking around in his black trench coat and his hat with his fancy crow cane. He's just whacking everybody on the head with it. He's the anti-hero that I deserve and want and need. He's also, he's the bad boy with a little tiny little hidden heart of gold. I am dying for a third book 
in Six of Crows because I need to know what happens between him and those little, that little council of tide things. Like those people that control the waters because he's in some serious hot soup with them. He is smart. He took on an entire club of gangsters and just beat them up. And he has such an interesting backstory. He was a cute little kid. I love him. <sighs> like he wears gloves all the time. Why? Read the book. Interesting and sad, but interesting. And finally, our last worst male protagonist of 2019. He doesn't have a name, literally. He is the main character of his book. We're in his perspective the whole book, but he has no name. We're never told. And it is the husband from my lovely wife. Now, I actually really liked him. He was an interesting guy. He was a psychopath and a murderer. But the one thing I can't do is forgive him because his little issue completely broke the believability of his book, My Lovely Wife. I mean, it's my lovely wife. He's obsessed with his wife, who is also a psycho serial, serial killer. He loves her dearly, but he cheats on her all the time. He goes to other ladies in the night. Why? I mean, y'all, y'all are good. They have a good, if not bloody relationship. Nothing stale between them, but he still feels the need to go out and cheat. It's completely against his character, and because that's one of the main issues in the book, him cheating, it breaks the book. Because someone with his character, who who loves his wife so much. Why would he cheat? And that's why he's the worst. Because he broke the book. He broke the book. You're lucky. You're nameless. So I can't curse you in the dead of night. Well, you think it's pretty cool how the author just went through the whole book without mentioning his name. Like they did that in Rebecca, one of my favorite books, and I love it. Well, you don't know that main character's name either. Speaking of names, you guys, comment section, homework, write down the worst name you've ever heard a child called. I believe the worst one I heard was a kid named Sincerely. I personally think that's hilarious, but somewhat sad. And guys, next video coming up, best and worst female chicks, female chicks. Chick characters, here we go, I'm excited. They're gonna get torn apart with my bare hands.